I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, there's been a lot of conversation and controversy over the past few years about the role of the police service in modern everyday society. And we're going to sidestep all of it and watch a Disney movie. Esteemed audience, one and all, I present to you the animal city of Zootropolis. <laughs> Released in 2016, Zootropolis, also titled Zootopia, tells the tale of lowly bunny traffic cop Judy Hopps, who becomes embroiled in a dark conspiracy to turn predator animals into monsters. Featuring the voices of such luminaries as Idris Elba and Shakira, alongside veteran voice actors such as Maurice LaMarche and John DiMaggio, Zootropolis is a genuine family film from the masters of the genre. So grab your badge, your notebook, and your voice recording carrot pen, and come with me as we prepare to hit the mean streets of... Zootropolis! Meet Judy Hopps, would-be supercop. Even as a kitten. And yes, that is the correct term for a baby rabbit. I've cross-referenced at least three sources. She's got a nose for trouble. And gets results. And so... Judy Hopps achieves her ambition and becomes Zootropolis's first rabbit officer. And then she gets stuck with parking duty. Where she spies a suspicious fox. This is Nick Wilde. And he has some harsh words for our would-be super cop. But when opportunity knocks, Judy answers. And promptly gets the hairdryer treatment for abandoning her station. And gets her next case... A missing otter. To find the missing otter, one Emmett Otterton, she has to go to Nick for help, because his tail was spotted in the last seen photograph. Of course, he's reluctant to help, so she has to coax it out of him. It's a delicious scene, but we're skipping it because YouTube. And so they head to a nudist spa, where they get their information. Which we're also skipping for more obvious reasons. Even though this is a Disney movie, and no animal genitalia are actually shown. And after a torturous encounter with the least languid of the sloths at the Department of Motor Vehicles, we head to the Tundra District, and the limo of a crime boss. An unlikely crime boss, but still very dangerous. Even more unlikely is the coincidence that saves them. You see, when Judy was pursuing a thieving weasel, Said thieving weasel tore a giant donut from the top of a donut shop. Well, giant for little Rodentia anyway. Judy managed to catch the donut moments before it hit a certain vole. This vole turned out to be the daughter of the vole father, Mr. Big. And that, my friends, is how Judy Hopps earned the help of the Tundra Town mob. And the vole father leads them to the rainforest district. But their contact isn't feeling himself. Our heroes escape. But when help arrives, he's gone. It's around this time that we get Nick's sad story. You see, when he was about eight or nine, all he really wanted was to join the Junior Scouts. Unfortunately, his initiation turned out to be a cruel hazing prank. It was upon that day that he swore that he'd never let them see him cry again. And that if all they were going to see was a scheming fox, then that's what he'd be. Going straight to the source, they discover that Manchas, their contact, was captured by wolves. Which leads them to the cliffside. And the missing otter, and several more besides. Which is very concerning to the mayor, who turns up out of nowhere. And seeing that he's the only suspect, Lionheart is taken into custody. But there's still the question of why this is happening, which isn't helped by Judy's disastrous press conference. Disastrous for her relationship to Nick, that is. And disastrous for her dream of cohesion between Predator and Prey. But isn't it funny how the strangest, smallest things can trigger something so much larger? Midnicampum holocythius, or night howlers for short. Natural insect repellent but they cause instability and savage behaviour when the bulbs are ingested. And a whole bunch of night howler bulbs had been stolen 
to kick off this whole adventure. And after a tearful apology to Mr. Wilde, Judy discovers the Trigger Man. The essence of the bulbs is distilled into a pellet, and this pellet can be fired from a great distance. And the Trigger Man is a marksman of great skill. After all, he did hit Emmett from inside of a moving limo. Judy resolves to take the whole train car to the ZPD, but oh dear. Luckily, Nick is a light-fingered fox. Unluckily, new Mayor Bellwether isn't so keen to get the word out. Yes, it was Bellwether, who under Mayor Lionheart was little more than a glorified assistant, that decided to protest her lot and the lot of prey animals everywhere. You see, about 90% of Zootropolis is made up of prey animals, and Bellwether reckoned that a common enemy would unite the city. Which is odd, because I didn't see any disunity until Bellwether started putting her plan into action. And she has just the thing to take care of the witnesses. But shock, it was a ruse. Ah, <sighs> the old switcheroo. Classic among classics. Switch out the savage remaking pellet for an organic blueberry. Oh, the number of times I've switched out a live bullet for a blank one. Buy me a shot sometime. I'll tell you a tale. And so our movie ends with Emmett Otterton returned to his senses, while Hops and Wild bring the noise. So that was Zootropolis. And you know what? I'm going to put this one into my house of love. This is a smart, wise-cracking, fast-talking buddy cop movie just featuring CGI cartoon animals. So let's get this out of the way. Judy Hopps is no Nicholas Angel. She's no super cop, not too much bunny for precinct one to handle, but she won't be denied. And she follows this case wherever it leads her. And I happen to think that Inspector Angel would be proud to have an officer like Judy Hopps on the Sanford Police Service. Now for me, the smooth measured tones of Jason Bateman made this movie as unflappable fox Nick Wilde. Not that Jennifer Goodwin's Judy Hopps was so forgettable mind you, and Hopps was an honest and earnest foil to her streetwise hustling nod and a wink accomplice, and the movie flows as a detective procedural should, from witness to contact, district to district, scene to scene. This movie is at points tense, sad, joyful in its many rug pulls, and overall triumphant as the plot to rule in fear is roundly squashed by a sly fox and the leperine arm of the law. Which brings us to the moral of the story. Much as I've spared you the rant on such things in previous years, this movie does rather revolve around its message in the later stages, though it's very much a procedural movie more than anything. So let's get to the point. Is it any good? Yes, yes it is. It's a breathless ride through the habitats of a bustling, diverse animal big city, mixed in with a detective story that wouldn't be out of place in a gumshoe flick of the 40s or a dirty cop movie of the 70s. But the best part about Zootropolis is that it's suitable for the entire family, and that's no backhanded compliment. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, you know where that button is, and why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And it'd be just wild if you subscribe to my crowdfunding links in the description below. But if you're not so inclined, that's okay too. And I'll thank you again for getting this far. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you wild days, safe nights, and great entertainment. So long, folks!